right guys, welcome back here to the Fast Host Power Tournament, where we'll be seeing I Am Gaming played out versus Ravon. It is now the second map as uh, I Am Gaming took the first map 13-7 in rather successful fashion. They seem to play it very well. If you guys did just join us, this is the group stages match, where uh, I Am Gaming are currently one map up. City Streets was the deciding choice of Ravon after losing the first map. The losers do get first choice. And uh, it seems that they're going to have some shenanigans playing around here in the knife round. So as the knife round works, of course, they're only allowed to use their knives. They only have the ability to use their knives. The beagles have no ammo, so they're just there for looks purely. And uh, it looks like Ravon will be grabbing the knife round. And we'll be seeing them move on to defense, which... Uh, some might choose the, the better side, some might say attack is the better side. This one is open, to, or very much open to um, to uh, personal preference. I like the attacking side a little bit more. I find defense uh, slightly more difficult. Now we're waiting for the last guys, last of the Ravon guys to ready up. We'll be getting right back underway. Now this was Ravon's choice, so sh they should have the map uh, advantage here. As I am gaming, this said so that they did prefer Crash, so we might be going into a third map if Ravon do win this one, which just means more Call of Duty for action for all of us. And uh, of course, let's just hope that Dins does not disconnect, because that'll always be a problem. Now, starting off here with Scopes, as I do love doing it so much, going to take it away here with Dedo, see if he can maybe open up with a nice early frag onto uh, the mid side. Smoke does go out from I'm Gaming, though, it's going to make his job a whole lot harder. So I'll just throw a nade out instead. Dupes takes out Ricketts over on the A side, looks like I'm Gaming are going for an A push. And. Uh, to be fair, Ravon only have got one player sitting on the A arch, which uh, does put them in the better position. There are no players from Ravon in A. There's not even a player in the flowers area, which is very weird. Now we'll see Fraz try to clear out the A arch. But I'm going to be going down any second. Nike lining it up, trying to find his spot to clear out or clear out the bomb plant. As uh, he doesn't spot anything. Oh, does spot one off to his left. Dedo takes out Gotti, and Nike lands a tag onto Fraz. And now with Iron Gaming reduced down to three members, it's going to make this attacking side a little bit more difficult to try and get the bomb done. Din takes out dupes. That's a big frag for them. It also means that the car park area is cleared. And that, of course, opens up the whole area or each side of the A-bomb side for, uh, for them to attack from. And that'll mean that first round goes to Ravon as uh, the defense held pretty strong. I did seem that Iron Gaming did lack the uh, the defenses towards the car park area and the attack was a little bit slow they could have gotten down the bomb down a little bit quicker but either way new round new chances for I am gaming and now we'll see Chris moving into mid pops out of smoke towards Biarch does not want to be taken up from the side as he moves through here this is a big area to cover on your own and especially to clear out he has got a teammate off to his right hand side tags coming in from Biarch can he close up the frag though no he cannot as he does take out Dins, finally Dins flying across the B arch, but um, will be taken out mid air as I do press the wrong button. And now Nike onto dupes. Once again, Nike onto Gotti. And it just seems that Ravon's defense is really strong, and I am gaming are struggling to find the weak hole in it. Chris moving forward with his teammate Fraz onto the B bomb site. Fraz is in mid. Chris, though, has got quite a challenge. He knows that Nike is over there on the laundry area, and there he goes. Nike peeks out, and uh, they've pretty much got confirmation that the other two players over towards the B side. So they will try their luck on A. Chris moving forward. He's going to have to try and get that bomb done as soon as he can. Fraz is over towards the flower side, and should be able to cover his teammates. Does actually make it all the way up into flowers. And if he looks left, he should be able to pick up a frag. Can he do so? Dedo takes out Chris. Fraz onto record. One versus two. As Franz is now being surrounded, he's got to be very careful about his positioning and where he looks. Of course, he does not have the time to just faff about. And uh, the bomb is being defused. Can he stop the defuse though? No, he can't. Nike peeks up from behind the bomb using the bomb as cover. And that'll mean that they get the frag onto Nike and get the defuse. 
and get themselves the first round on the board here. Now, having a look over at the scoreboard, nothing too interesting as of yet. Seems that Dedo, Nike, and Dins are content with their three frags apiece after just two rounds. Dupes, on the other hand, can he find something in mid? No, he cannot. And uh, it looks like a B push coming out from IM Gaming. Nades and smokes and shots into the B alley, trying to prevent IM Gaming pushing out, of course. Dedo lands a nade onto Dupe scope on scope action of a different kind. Now, Chris trying to find the player in laundry. Does actually tag up Nike a couple of times. Although Stuzo is going to be the one that finishes him off. SMG and B Arch. It is full and he's going to take out Fraz. Dins onto Chris. Both SMGs in action from Ravon as it is only Stuzo left standing. One versus four. Dead is going to find his number. Take him out. That means Dead gets himself not only a three man, but also the round for his team. Rickard and uh, Gotti yet to find Frags. Maybe this is the, the map where we find a, a bond. If you don't know what a bond is, it just pretty much means that the guy gets zero kills, zero assist, and seven deaths. Which means 007, which we like to call a bond in the COD4 community. Now Phil pushing into mid. He has put out a player in the market, although deciding not to do something about it just yet. As a, it is a very difficult position to attack. Has put out a player peeking around the corner, but instead safely just decides, well, I'll rather just stay alive longer in the round and uh, let you take that position. Dins on to Chris, Dedo on to Stuzo, and once again, Rave on, Rave on standing strong. I didn't mean for that to be such a tongue twister, but it came out that way. Dins on to Fraz, as Phil now moves over towards the A side. Dupes takes him out, pushing forward with the AK. Dins hasn't, Dupes hasn't actually changed the AK, he's just picked one up. Has got the bomb with him, hasn't decided to go for the plant just yet. Finally deciding to move forward. His teammate needs to catch up though. He needs to have some teamwork there with him. And uh, oh, he has heard a play moving into the winners. Can he get away in time? He pretty much squeezes it out then. Gets tagged up in the foot. Dins takes him out. Gotti is now your last man standing. Where is he? He has got the AK. Oh, and he's watching. Oh, he's got his eyes on that A bomb site. And now it's going to be watching to see if someone comes around that corner. Peeks out. And Nike spots him. But the bomb plant is for the player in car park. So sitting in this position. I should be able to find anyone or stop anyone defusing their bomb. Only 15 seconds left the clock. He just needs to stall for enough time. He gets the frag. Now he just needs to rush back. And literally, as I said, a couple more seconds, two more seconds, and he would have stopped Nike getting uh, the defuse. And, oh, it was so close. Raven picked themselves up the fourth round here, though. And they seem to be bringing it back in quite extreme fashion at the moment. Some could argue that it's just the defending side being very biased. Although I can say, well, if you can't get one round in, one round out of four, then you definitely are struggling. Rickard with an aid on to Frazman, and now Deep still trying to find something mid. He does seem to sit back quite a lot. Dedo, Dedo is watching for the peaks in mid, and uh, has been getting himself quite a couple of frags every so often. There we go. Gotti walks right into his aim. Oh, you find more though. Stu's on to Dins, bomb in hand, moving forward. It is a difficult position here for IM Gaming. They've got uh, three players still alive. Make that two, as Dupes does find the head of Dedo. Nade going out from Stu's. I've no idea where he's trying to nade there. As of that really just went nowhere. Watching into mid, he has faked on the bomb. Fakes once more. SMG spray coming out from B Arch, but he is definitely expecting someone coming in from the. Uh, from the wooden area. He has the right to think so, but Rickard is being rather slow with his push. And there we go. Rickard finally peeks out, takes out Stuzo, finds Dupes too, finishes him off with the M4, my favorite weapon of the game. And that'll push it to a 5-0 round score. Really great stuff so far. Really great stuff so far from the Ravon side. Seems to be working for them, and uh, I am gaming calling a timeout. And I can only assume that that is most definitely a tactical timeout. And now with Frazman still sitting in mid. What am I why am I commentating? I just like it's instinctive. I just looked at my screen, I saw people sitting there, and decided, hey, let me let me just talk over this. It's the mind of a commentator, he sees the game and starts talking. Either way, though, I guess this is a better time than any. If you guys want to follow us on our social media, that's for some of the reason the screen doesn't change. Does it change now? 
Does it change now? Does it change now? There we go. If you guys want to follow us, our social media is on the right, lower right-hand side of your screen. You guys can check us out on Twitter and Facebook at just Quad V. And on YouTube where you can find all our old, video, old videos on demand. Our new videos on demand too. Which is just Quad V TV on YouTube. Of course, this game will be there in a day or two. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, congrats, you found us. Of course, just a big shout out to Fast Host, the sponsors for the tournament, putting up loads of money along with Game Shadows, guys, and uh, of course, Epic Lan. Guys, go check out the new LAN from Epic Lan. It will be Epic 9 over at Utox at a racing course. Loads of fun, great way to meet all the people you play with. And uh, if you're just a social gamer, go check them out. It is just, it's just loads of fun. They also have Epic Radio, if you guys want to go check that out, listen to some music and tunes. They've got talk shows on there too, which I've had the, the great opportunity of being on. For the one time. But either way, back into this matchup now as I stop talking loads of rubbish. And uh, we will be seeing... Oh, here we go. Here we go. With, let's go with an AK. Let's see what the AK rolls are doing. We'll be seeing Gotti throw his smoke out towards mid. Nade towards the Aorch. As he tries to stop anyone pushing up towards mid. And then goes to sit back and just watch the stairs. And uh, that supportive roll of the AK does take quite a bit of patience. Stu's on the other hand being very aggressive. Pushing forward. Spots play off to his right hand side. Chris should be able to follow this frag up. Can he do so? No, he can't. Full action grabs both frags. Nearly gets himself the third as the first initial rounds from uh, Stu's or Miss. And uh, Rickard there taking out a player for himself. Gets himself another frag for the scoreboard. Dupes onto Rickard for the reply. And now I am gaming reduced to two. Dupes is waiting for Dedo to peek. It's not coming though. He just hears the shots ringing off. Dead is just spraying through walls. He's like, hey, why not? Let's just hope for the best. And uh, with I am Gaming only sitting on two frags, I can imagine it is safe to do so. Den's not moving into the A arch. Ooh, just flying across there. Just a little tactic to try and spot any movement in the A side once again. Did he spot the play towards the top of the flower stairs, though? I did. So I'm pretty sure he would have. Still watching into the arch. There is a play just on the other side of it. Does find Gotti. Dupes your lost man standing. And he is actually all the way in the windows building. Only 15 seconds left on the clock. He needs to move onto the bomb site and try to get the bomb down. And hope that no one shoots at him. But unfortunately, it's not going to go that way. And we'll see Duns pick up another frag in the round. 6-0 currently for Ravon. And this is definitely a whole different team to what we saw on the first map. And I would not be surprised if we see this go into a third map. Dupes making his way onto the little bounce onto the top of the milk van. And that does find himself a shot there onto Rickard. Can I am gaming finally open up a bomb site and get the bomb down? Chris moving into the A arch. Uh, and nades the top of the stairs, which is a very good position to nade. Unfortunately for him, there is a player in the B oh sorry, in the A arch. It is Nake along with two other teammates as they decide well they need to try and reclaim this bomb site. Dedo has moved up to the top of the street. He's got Dupes just in front of him. Although Chris over to his right hand side is going to be the one that closes him off. Stuzo gets the bomb down and this is the first glimmer of hope I see here for Ravon to get a first round on the board. Say Ravon? What am I saying? I am gaming. There we go. Nike does get taken out by Frazman. And that'll be 1-6. Finally I am gaming put a round on the, on the board for themselves. God is sitting on 1 for 6. Unfortunately he's also taken out or taken away the chance to sit on a bond which I'm upset about and I just realized that I forgot to go full screen I massively apologize I greatly apologize you guys can definitely hate on me for that one it does happen when uh, when my brain gets confuzzled if I can put it that way either way though back into the round it is the eighth round now Dupe's trying to find Nike in the flower store Although Nike not peeking out enough for Dupes to find him, he's barely giving himself enough screen to uh, see the to see the stairs. And the battlegrounds have gone quiet. Dead is the only man to have dropped so far, and it doesn't seem that any more are going down anytime soon. Dupes with the nade out that I'm pretty sure is going to go nowhere. How did that land on Nike? It actually went into the door, off to the right-hand side of Nike. Dupes on the second one there with his D-Glide onto Dens. I have no idea how Dupes even thought of that nade. 
Got down to Phil though, as Dukes moves up to the top of the street, grabs himself a third of the round, coming out of his little closet for some other reason. And adds three more onto his score, already six. So, uh, I feel really bad now for the last round being uh, in mini screen. Uh, t it, it, it happens. Oops. Now, of course, with dupes once more pushing over in towards uh, the B side. Looks like I'm Gaming going to try the tactic that worked out for them the previous round. Raybon only sitting on two players. Not going to be so good for them. Uh, make that a whole lot less. They've only done to two versus four. I am Gaming just seems to be overpowering them at the moment. Quick reactions and well, it just seems to be catching Raybon off guard. And with Duns. Your last man standing for the Raybon side. I lie, it is not Duns. Is it Duns? It is Duns. SMG in hand has got a deagle with him. But this is going to be such a massive challenge for him. He still thinks that there's a player on the mid market stairs, but there is no one there. And uh, just wasting that time, really. Deep's coming in from mid, or the A Arch takes out Duns. And then I'll push it two and three, six. I am gaming now securing three rounds in a row. It seems like they just decided, well, screw this. Let's just start winning rounds. And uh, have woken up from their slumber. Going for an A push. Changing it up a bit here. Trying to keep Raven on their toes. And uh, this tactic seems a whole lot more rehearsed. Nades smokes. Windows smoked. The flower is smoked. Nades on the A arch as the bomb goes down. Could you ask for anything better from I am gaming? Rickard getting tagged up heavily in the Winners building. His position will be called. Dupes finishes him off. Rickard gets a frag onto Chris, though. And a second one onto Dupes. Raven with a very good reply, though. I am gaming's only down to two members. And uh, they need to try and stop the defuse going. And Dins takes out Frazman. And Gotti goes down. My word, I've never seen a reclaim like that. Such a perfectly executed strat from I am gaming. Gets completely and utterly red and just played back in I am gaming's hands I can only say very well played from Raven although it shouldn't uh, demoralize I am gaming too much and uh, they should just keep their heads high keep on trying was only one round looks like they are, are they going for the same strat again no they're not they are going for a mid orientated push towards this it looks like they might be going towards being actually they're not going anywhere at the moment they're still stuck in spawn and uh, Stu's are holding the bomb, Gotti holding his hands, dupes along with them, all three of them clustered up, one nade at one point, could have taken all three players out. Got to be careful about stacking up like that. Stu's are taking out full, dupes with his nade once again over towards the door of a... Uh, oh, his nade actually failed as he tried to nade into laundry, dupes moving forward. He knows that Nike plays the laundry area. And uh, it's actually Dedo that takes on dupes. I wouldn't even have called that one. Dedo sitting back towards the B side, helping out his teammate as he has also he's also able to cover up the uh, the top of the street from his position, which is very good use of positioning from him. And now Stu's are making his way over to back towards the A side. Definitely not keen to attack with his two players sitting and waiting for him. We do see him moving up into the A arch. Player that is laying in wait for him is 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 a drum roll please Rickards as I just skip over him M4 in hand he's going to be the sole man covering the A site as once this bomb plant goes down there's no way that Dead will be able to move back to the A site quickly enough now peeking over the stairs he'll find both of those players lines them up easily and that'll push it to A3 Raven really drawing this one back fantastic. Fantastic stuff from uh, Raybon so far on this map after their performance on on Crash. Dupes misses the jump. It happens occasionally to the professionals. And, uh, ooh, spray coming in from Rickard, and that is why I love the M4. That recoilless weapon able to lay down so many rounds on a very small area. And uh, Dupes does go down to an assault weapon, and that is such an always such a good exchange it means that your scope can still freely move around somewhere else and uh, you can challenge the scopes attacking your bomb site that is still sitting watching mid Nike still in his same position got trying to move forward it seems that Raybon's defense is very well practiced and uh, they are not moving out where they don't need to Explosive they are landed. sticking to what they know best and it seems city streets is exactly that 
Gotti trying to rotate back towards Carpog has lit up the barrel now that of course if shot will blow up a car in succession and uh, oh, although his car has been blown up so he has no more defenses on that side Chris takes out Dedo and with only Nike and Phil the last two remaining Fraz takes out Nike Phil your last man standing now he's trying to rotate through a uh, through mid after being in car park, although giving away his position with an SMG spray, it will be IM Gaming's round. That'll take it to 4 8 at the halftime. And a good half it was. Very quick, ready up here from the guy. I say very quick, it seems that Rayvon just likes to hold back that slight bit. I apologize once again for keeping the screen on there. You got It's just that flag you get, you know, it, it happens once, and I now got six messages on Xfire, a whole chat full of menace, change screen. I'm not, I'm not even going to change to the, to the halftime screen. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it like this. That way, nothing bad can happen. I, I should actually thank everyone on X and everyone in in a uh, in chat for for notifying me of that, for bringing my attention to it. I just get so exci can, can I blame it on like being excited about commentating? I, is that a valid excuse? I don't think it's going to going to suffice. Either way though, second half here of the second map. Rayvon currently sitting on a comfortable 8-4 at the halftime. As then I move to the attacking side. Frazman pushing up through mid. Dance is going to take him down relatively easy though. As uh, it is now Rayvon's turn to try and get that bomb down. Has Dance spotted the player in mid. He has spotted some movement. Chris going under his fire and now the bomb should easily be able to go down here. Falls already on the B arch. Jump. Dupes the only one to reply so far onto Rayvon player. Has full spot of the player in mid. Yes, he has. Takes out dupes with a deagle headshot. Got you onto Rickert. And uh, <laughs> it seems that they're just toying with him at the moment. Full takes out Gotti. Nine falls the score line. And Raven just running around on the map. Pretty much using utilizing anything they feel like. Pushing uh, around on the attacking side. Really going to have to get some extra nades out for the IM Gaming side to try and get r stop Raven just moving around so freely. Dedo, Dedo takes out dupes. And Nade does actually stop Dins in his tracks. But there are no further Nades to uh, to keep this up. Rickert onto Chris. That B side once again completely open. It just seems that the Nades and the sheer numbers that they're using to get into their B side is working in their favor. Full takes out Gotti. Now moving to cover on the mid side. Flash does go out. He will actually be flashing a player but won't be knowing about it. Rickert onto Franzman. Stuza onto record. Stuza now your last man standing. He is towards the top of the B Street. Actually going back into mid. He's got a very difficult angle of attack. I don't think he has an aid with him. An AK this late into the run with an with a nade will be rather odd. And uh is he gonna be peeking through the window on mid? Explosion he won't actually see the player. But he will be able able to see any players moving away from the bomb side. Unfortunately, he doesn't see either of that. And now we'll have to move into the B arch. It is a very channeled position. And there we go, full watching it very closely. Takes out Stuzel. 10 falls the score line. Six round advantage in favor of Rayvon Gaming. I doubt they're going to be complaining with that. Having looked at the scores, we'll see I'm Gaming with a lot more closer kill spread, while a, a total of 11 frags difference between top and bottom place on the Rayvon team. Although I doubt that's really mattering at the moment, because it's working for them. If it works, why why change it? Chris, though, starting off with a plus 10. Full and Dins go down. Rickard getting himself a plus 10 as Chris and Gotti go down. And it seems Rickard with an M4. I just love the way he plays with the M4. Where is this man? There we go. He's trying to find players here towards the top of the street on B side. There is actually two there that he could kill. They can't see either of them at the moment. Has also got the bomb in hand. And uh, if he does die here, so the great thing about that little wall is the players won't actually see the bomb and your teammates can still pick it up without being spotted. Now Rickett moving down those stairs. He's very limited on the on the areas he can see from there and will need to make some noise at some other point to, uh, to try and move out. He has dropped the bomb. Scope shot rings in from dupes. Dedo takes out Franzman. And more shots ringing in towards Dupes. You can actually see the bullets flying right past Dupes' scope. And uh, Dupes hearing the sound of players moving up on him. He is all but tagged up. Dead are going to close or finish him off. Stu's on to Nike. One on one. 
only 16 seconds left on the clock. Data going for the jump onto the arch, and that would have won him the round if he spotted the player. Unfortunately, it's not going to go that way. Steals are moving forward. Is Data going to peek out here? It's just off to his right hand side. Oh, and he looks the wrong way. And Steezer grabs the frag onto Dedo. 10-5. Putting them five rounds difference now. I am gaming. Getting their first round on the defending side. But this has got quite a couple of rounds more to go. Deep's peeking into mid. Won't find himself a frag early on. As that smokes will completely deter his vision. And the players just seem to be running right past his bullets. As he now peeks towards the mid stairs, not going to spot anything there either. Franzman, the lower of his A arch stairs. Now peeking around the corner, does come under some heavy fire, gets tagged up, full decides to move in, clear off the, uh, close off the player, and it does go in his favor. I am gaming already reduced off down to one member after only 30 seconds. It's around, I uh, lie, 40 seconds. Okay, that's a little bit longer. It seemed good in my head to say, and my lips agreed, and uh, unfortunately it was the wrong thing to say. And now, Explosives planted. Stuzo at the top of the street, spots the player on the bomb, has not spotted the player on the top of the arch though. And at this point in time, he does not really have a good position to prevent these players moving away from the bomb or taking them down. Nike takes out Stuzo as he moves towards the fences. 11-5 will be the scoreline. And... Uh, only two runs in this one, and Rayvon actually take the second map. And that'll be a huge win for their team. Second way here with Suzo in this, uh, what is the 17th round? As Chris grabs himself three frags, I look away for a moment. And that is the end of the round. I am gaming... Wow, I, I mean, Raven pretty much would have had to sacrifice that round, just run straight into mid and all die to one play, which was what they pretty much did. And I apologize to Chris for being slow on that one. Oh well, he just needs to do it again, simple as. Seems he is being a little bit aggressive here on the B side. This flash has gone out. Behind the milk van. Or as my favorite Finnish player, Leaf, used to say, White Wan. Those V's just seem to be uh, dodging him. Either way, I'm gaming, still standing with five players strong. Chris going to go for the first frag he can. And uh, that'll be full going down. Stuza onto Nike. And uh, wow, it is all down to Dedo. And Raven really are crumbling at the moment. I mean, these last two rounds have not just been like landslide uneven. But I'm gaming, have barely been losing players. God is going to take a tag, not going to die from it. It seems the only way they are going to win this round is by Chris killing his own teammate. So that's dupes down. Stuzo also goes down, but Chris coming in to clean up the round. And that'll be 11-7. Two more rounds and we'll pretty much have a opposite of uh, the first map, but in favor of Raven Gaming. Now, uh, starting off with this round, a couple of nades going out. Dins and Chris go down. Four on four as we move into the later parts of the round. Dedo taking out dupes. Ravon finally have a B attack that has worked out for them. Oh, no, there's a player on the bomb. No, it's Gotti. And he's just sitting there. Takes out Rickert. Can he find the second one? No, he can't. Nike actually closes him off. And Stuzel is now the last man standing. Although, the two players from Ravon don't really seem too keen on moving out and trying to get that bomb down. And, uh... We do see Nike just jumping left and right between the B arch. Trying to draw out some fire. Spray comes in from the window, so you'll definitely know where that player is. And just deciding to move away, but moves away at definitely the wrong time. Data luckily in there with the scope, takes him out, puts it to 12 7, 5 round map point, 5 rounds, 5 game rounds, point rounds? That's the one. For the Raybon side to take this one to the third map, which I feel is very well deserved after the performance they've shown on this map. Really does go to show how important the map choice is. Now, uh, Raven are going for what seems to be an A push. They have got record on the front line there. Full moving into the SMG, flying in from behind. Oh, they're going to be getting a quick bomb plant there. Oh, there's no players in mid to try and contest this. Nate comes in from Chris, though, stops record planting. And can Chris keep them in this map? Can he bring it back for his team to maybe 
give them the chance of an overtime. It is such a small chance. But then again, it has to be tried for. Chris takes out Nike. Scope shot rings off, so he knows where the scope is too. If you can just find out where the other player is, then uh, definitely stands a chance of winning this one. Oh, squeezes under the aim of full, although Dedo takes out Chris. And that'll be a 13-7. Good half being called as we now find out what is going to be the third map for the IM Gaming side. Of course, because IM Gaming lose the map, they get the map choice for the third map. Looks like no call just yet. Either way, guys, that was the second map between I Am Gaming and Raven. This puts the map scores at 1-1. So stick around as we head into the third map, which uh, is yet to be decided.